Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries. Thank you for joining me again today on this, as you can see, very, very, very sunny Sunday. <laughs> All right, let's jump right in. The title of this message is This Love, with an exclamation point, and love all caps. <laughs> so I experienced something yesterday that reminded me of uh, feelings that Father God had delivered me from um, years ago. And the devil wanted me to believe that um, I had not been delivered, that I was still in that place of brokenness, still bound by them and um, in a position where he could manipulate me through them. But here's the thing, when I refused to his, his invitation to go back there, <laughs> that's when the Lord spoke to me. He told me that he allowed it for me to speak on it. That, that there were many who were bound in this manner unknowingly. He wanted it exposed. So I guess you could kind of say I took one for the team again. <laughs> Anywho, these feelings are of the fruit of the spirits of abandonment and rejection. Yes, the devil plants seeds and produces fruit also. But God, and we gotta do it with the finger, but God. There could be a, a family dynamic that excludes you or makes you feel so. Sometimes our decisions and or our behavior can cause close ones, family and friends, to, to turn away, and possibly necessarily so. Unbeknownst to us, the devil plants seeds of abandonment and rejection in the heart through situations. He waters those seeds by life's offenses and setups. Here's some examples. I'm going to read them. Sibling favoritism. We hear about sibling rivalry, but there's sibling favoritism. This is what the Lord put on my heart. Last chosen for the team in gym class or sports. Elementary school Valentine's Day card count. Someone like someone you liked in high school like someone else, or maybe they just jilted you altogether. Disappointment regarding a prom date scenario job opportunity falls through someone else got the position married with unkind in-laws glory to god i had that problem being cheated on family gatherings without your invite separation divorce that was not your idea desire or plan misunderstood with no way to explain or properly set things straight Reminders of your maybe not so conventional conception and entrance into the family. Now, I named quite a few here, but I'm sure maybe you can probably name a few more scenarios. You see, the devil manipulates uh, by using these throughout the lifespan to water those seeds, the initial planting of abandonment and rejection. There are, these are spirits that are intended to ride us through life and disrupt God's intent and purpose of love for us. There may be disappointment and even confounding when those who should love and be there are not. The respect that should be given is not. The protection and care that is meant to be given are not. Through these, there is more watering of the abandonment and rejection seeds. But here we go again with the finger, but God, all these causes may, all this, excuse me, all this causes many to turn to people, ways, and substances to work through or to overlook and dull the ache of the heart, putting them in bondage to fear of letting go of what Satan is using for their captivity. And they're wondering, how did I get, how am I addicted to this? How am I in this situation? How am I this? The devil manipulated you, manipulated. <laughs> manipulated you <laughs> through rejection, abandonment, and all the other scenarios that came and watered those seeds. And next thing you know, you're caught up in something. God has something to say about all this, though. I'm going to read some verses to you that support this and shows that God doesn't want us in those situations. 
Jeremiah 31 3 and you all many of you all have heard me this is one of my favorites not like any part of the Word of God is not my favorite but I like this one the Lord has appeared of me of old to me saying yes I have loved you with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness I have drawn you Psalm 22 verses 9 through 10 yet you are he who took me out of the womb you meaning God you made me hope and trust when I was on my mother's breast I was cast upon you from my very birth from my mother's womb you have been my God Psalm chapter 27 verse 10 although my mother my father and my mother have forsaken me yet the Lord will take me up adopt me as his child Romans chapter 5 verses 7 and 8 now it is an extraordinary thing for one to give his life even for an upright man though perhaps for a noble and lovable and generous benefactor some might even dare to die but God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners Christ the Messiah the anointed one died for us Romans chapter 8 verse 31 what then shall we say to all this if God is for us who can be against us who can be our foe if God is on our side and another John chapter 8 verse 36 therefore if the Son makes you free you shall be free indeed there is love that sets free this love lifts the head and the heart this love pulls up by the root the darkness planted. God's love extended to us by Jesus, making us free from sin and his captivity. Free from Satan, sin, and his captivity. This love encompasses and saturates us by Holy Spirit, making us aware of God's love, causing us to experience God's love, and reminds us of God's love when the enemy comes to attack. I'm gonna pray right now. Father God, we thank you for this, your love. We thank you, Father, for the power that is in that love. We thank you for how you have set it to be for us. We thank you, Father God, for sending your Holy Spirit, sending Jesus for us, that we could come in and unto that love. We personally and directly, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, because it's by you that we are surrounded and saturated with that love. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen. John, no, let me see, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 16. Let me plant these God seeds into your heart right now. We talked about the other, and I am not glorifying the devil. But this needs to be exposed. He has run amok through the, the, the lives of, of people who don't know Christ, but especially now, it's so disheartening to see how he's running amok amongst the body of Christ, those who believe. But see, once he's exposed, he has no more, um, he can't manipulate us because he's been found out. And the Holy Spirit will cause us to recognize his tricks and his antics and his wiles and his ways. And he will, the Holy Spirit will give us discernment so that we will know and the enemy, he can't get over like that again. He may attempt and he will, but he will not have the victory for our victory is already won in and by Jesus, who is God in God's love in the flesh. So 1 John chapter four, verse 16. Now remember, these are God's seeds that by me reading them, I'm believing that I'm planting them in your heart for you to meditate on. Okay, 1 John 4, 16. And we know, understand, recognize, are conscious of by observation and by experience and believe, adhere to, and put faith in and rely on the love God cherishes for us. God is love. And he who dwells and continues in love dwells and continues in God. And God dwells and continues in him. Now, here's another set that's very powerful. Romans chapter 8, verses 30, starting at verse 35. Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? 
shall suffering and affliction and tribulation, or calamity or distress, or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword? Even as it is written, for thy sake, we put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. For I am persuaded beyond doubt am I sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things impending and threatening nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You may need to officially accept this love as your own by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. So repeat this prayer after me. If that's you and you choose to come into um, walk in to, to, to love, God's love, which is God himself. Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you came to earth giving your life for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I make you the Lord of my life. In your name, I pray and thank you. Glory to God. Now, for everybody, come on now, everybody join in on this declaration. I belong to God. His love is mine. I am not abandoned or rejected. God has always loved me and he always will. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify you, Lord God. Thank you, sir, for this word of encouragement, this word of correction, this word of knowledge that you're giving unto us today. Holy Spirit, help this to settle in our spirit and uproot those things that the enemy planted that he thinks he can continue to manipulate and control us. We are not in that jurisdiction, his jurisdiction, Satan's jurisdiction of darkness and evil. No, we're not under that by the blood of Jesus. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have victory over that. That's not of us anymore. But the enemy still tries to play. He still tries to catch up, catch us up. But that's not happening anymore. And thank, thank you, Lord God, it's by you that we can tell the enemy, step off. You have no jurisdiction here. I belong to God. So Father, thank you so much. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for keeping us free. And we choose to walk in it, to walk in your love and the freedom it provides. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all I have for you today. God bless. Bye-bye.